Vastly Garlic Episode 3, The Dark Origin of the Little Girl in Red, a terrifying tale, high in the mist-shrouded mountains of Taiwan, where the ancient trees whispered secrets and the rivers murmured tales of old, there lived a young woman named Shuai. Shuai was born into a village where tradition and superstition intertwined, where the spirits of the ancestors were said to walk among the living. Shu Ai's family was not wealthy, but they had enough to get by. Her father, a stern and hard-working man, toiled in the fields, while her mother tended to the household chores. Shu Ai grew up in the shadow of her parents' love, sheltered from the harsh realities of the world outside. But as Shu Ai blossomed into womanhood, she discovered that not all was as it seemed in her idyllic village. Beneath the surface of polite society lurked a darkness that would shatter her world forever. Shu Ai's father, once a kind and gentle man, began to change. He grew distant and cold, his once warm eyes now filled with a hunger that Shu I could not understand. At first, she brushed it off as the stresses of daily life, but as time went on, she began to fear him. It started with a touch, a lingering hand on her shoulder, a brush of fingers against her skin. Shu I tried to ignore it, to pretend that nothing was wrong, but the unease gnawed at her insides like a hungry beast. Then came the whispers, the gossip of the village women, the sidelong glances and knowing smiles. They spoke of Shu Ai's father and his roving eye, of the rumors that swirled like smoke in the wind. Shu Ai's mother turned a blind eye to it all, refusing to acknowledge the truth that lay before her. She buried herself in her work, her face a mask of stoicism, while her daughter suffered in silence. But Shu Ai could not escape the truth forever. One fateful night, as the moon hung low in the sky, her father came to her room. His eyes burned with a fire that sent chills down Shu Ai's spine, and she knew then that her worst fears were about to be realized. The assault was swift and brutal, leaving Shu Ai broken and bleeding on her bed. She wanted to scream, to fight back, but fear held her paralyzed. When her father was done, he left her there, a shell of the girl she once was. Shu Ai's world crumbled around her. She could no longer bear to look her mother in the eye, knowing that she had failed to protect her daughter. And so, in the dead of night, Shuai fled into the mountains, her heart heavy with sorrow and shame. For days, Shuai wandered the wilderness, her only companions the echoes of her own footsteps and the distant cry of the wind. She had no destination in mind, no purpose other than to escape the pain that gnawed at her soul. But fate had other plans for Shuai. In the depths of the forest, she stumbled upon a secluded cabin, its walls weathered by time and neglect. It was there, in the silence of the mountains, that Shuai gave birth to a child, a daughter born of pain and despair. Alone and afraid, Shuai cradled her newborn daughter in her arms, her tears mingling with the infant's cries. She knew that she could not keep the child, that she had no means to provide for her. And so, with a heavy heart, Shuai made the hardest decision of her life. Under cover of darkness, Shuai left the baby on her parents' doorstep, a silent plea for forgiveness. The weight of guilt and shame bore down on Shuai like a leaden blanket, suffocating her spirit. She wandered aimlessly through the village, her mind consumed by despair. With each step, the burden grew heavier, until Shuai felt as though she could no longer bear it. She found herself at the edge of a cliff, the vast expanse of the valley stretching out before her. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she gazed into the abyss, the darkness within mirroring the darkness in her soul. In a moment of desperation, Shuai stepped forward, her foot slipping on the loose gravel. She plummeted into the void, the wind whipping past her ears as she fell. When her mother found the infant the next morning, there was no mercy in her eyes, only scorn and bitterness. Her mother blamed the infant for the family's suffering, branding her as a shame and curse to the family. And so, the infant was condemned to a life of neglect and abuse, her innocence stolen before she even had a chance to know it. As the years passed, the child, now known as May, grew up in the shadow of the village, a specter of shame and neglect. Her appearance had become increasingly unsettling and shrouded in the shadows of neglect and abandonment. Her name was whispered only in hushed tones, a reminder of the shame that had befallen the family. The villagers avoided her, casting wary glances as she passed, for there was something unsettling about her presence. As the child grew, so too did her peculiarities. Her skin took on an unnatural hue, a sickly shade of grey that seemed to shimmer in the moonlight. Her eyes, once bright with innocence, grew dark and hollow, 
devoid of any spark of life, and her limbs twisted and contorted, taking on grotesque shapes that bore little resemblance to those of a normal human child. Despite the villagers' fear and suspicion, the child remained largely oblivious to their whispers and stares. She spent her days wandering the forests and mountains that surrounded the village, her only companions the creatures of the wilderness. She felt a strange kinship with them, as though they alone understood the loneliness that gnawed at her soul. But as the years passed, the child's isolation only deepened. She watched from the shadows as other children played and laughed, their voices a cruel reminder of the life she would never know. And as she watched, a bitter resentment grew within her, twisting her heart into something dark and vengeful. It was during these years of isolation that the child's body began to change. Strange growths appeared on her skin, grotesque tumors that pulsated with a sickly green light. Her bones warped and twisted, forming unnatural shapes that caused her unimaginable pain, and her mind, already fragile from years of neglect, began to unravel, consumed by a madness born of loneliness and despair. Despite her best efforts to hide her true nature, May could not escape the whispers and stares of the villagers, they avoided her at all costs, crossing the street to avoid passing too close, casting wary glances over their shoulders as they hurried away. But amidst the fear and suspicion that surrounded her, May clung to one hope, a hope that one day, she would be reunited with her mother. She had heard the whispers of her mother's fate, the tragic tale of a woman driven to despair by the cruelty of her own family, and though she knew not the details, she felt a strange connection to the woman who had given her life. Yet, May's hopes were shattered when her grandmother, driven by fear, hatred and superstition, decided to rid the family of the cursed child once and for all. One fateful day, her grandmother lured her into the mountains under the guise of a picnic. As they trekked deeper and deeper into the wilderness, the old woman's true intentions became clear. With a heart as cold as the winter wind, she abandoned the child, leaving her to perish among the trees. Alone and afraid, May cried out into the silent forest, her voice echoing through the empty wilderness. But there was no one to hear her, no one to offer comfort in her hour of need. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the forest floor, May was abandoned forever. In the heart of the untamed wilderness, May fought to survive against the harsh embrace of nature. Abandoned by her grandmother, she was left to fend for herself in a world that showed her no mercy. Yet, despite the odds stacked against her, May refused to succumb to despair. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months as May struggled to find food in the unforgiving landscape. She scavenged for scraps, eating whatever she could find to quiet the growling hunger in her belly. Soil crunched between her teeth, worms wriggled in her mouth, and insects squirmed in her stomach. It was a meager existence, but May had grown accustomed to hardship, her will to survive unyielding. One evening, as May sat by the edge of a stream, her stomach rumbling with hunger, she heard a rustling in the bushes nearby. Alert and cautious, she watched as a group of small, peculiar creatures emerged from the foliage. They were gremlins, strange beings with pointed ears and mischievous grins. At first, May was hesitant, unsure of what to make of these creatures, but as they approached, she sensed no malice in their demeanor. They spoke to her in a language she couldn't understand, but their gestures were friendly, and May soon found herself drawn to their playful antics. The gremlins took May under their wing, teaching her the ways of the jungle and the art of survival. They showed her which plants were safe to eat and which were poisonous, how to hunt and set traps, and even how to communicate with the animals of the forest. But it was their teachings on hypnosis that intrigued May the most. With their guidance, she learned to manipulate the minds of those around her, bending their wills to her command. It was a powerful skill, one that May knew she could use to her advantage. As May grew more adept at using hypnosis, a plan began to form in her mind, a plan for revenge. She remembered the cruelty of her family, the neglect and abuse she had suffered at their hands, and she knew that it was time to make them pay. But May also knew that she couldn't rely on the gremlins to help her with her revenge. They were kind-hearted creatures, innocent in their mischief, and she didn't want to involve them in her dark deeds. So she kept her plans hidden, practicing her hypnosis techniques in secret, biding her time until she was ready to strike. As the girl embraced her newfound strength, she felt a change come over her. Her once innocent form twisted and contorted, becoming something altogether otherworldly, and thus, 
the legend of the little girl in red was born. In the heart of Taiwan's dense forests, the legend of the little girl in red took on a life of its own, spreading fear and fascination in equal measure. But while the stories captivated the imaginations of many, few understood the true terror that lurked beneath the surface. It was a foggy evening in the mountains when May first made her appearance. The air was thick with moisture, the mist shrouding the landscape in an eerie veil. Hikers ventured cautiously along the winding trails, their senses on high alert for any sign of danger. Among them was a group of friends, their laughter echoing through the forest as they navigated the rugged terrain. They were young and carefree, unaware of the darkness that lurked just beyond the trees. As they rounded a bend in the trail, they spotted her, a figure standing at the edge of the clearing, her form obscured by the swirling mist. She wore a red dress, the fabric billowing around her like a cloak of blood. Her hair hung in tangled strands around her face, and her eyes burned with an intensity that sent a shiver down their spines. For a moment, the group stood frozen in fear, unsure of what to make of the mysterious apparition before them. But as they watched, the girl stepped forward, her movements slow and deliberate. Who are you? One of the hikers called out, his voice trembling with fear, but the little girl in red did not answer. Instead, she turned and disappeared into the mist, leaving the group standing in stunned silence. As news of the encounter spread, the legend of the little girl in red took on a life of its own. People whispered of her ghostly presence haunting the mountainsides, her eerie laughter echoing through the trees, but amidst the fear and uncertainty, there were those who sought to uncover the truth behind the chilling legend. One such individual was a retired journalist named Liang, determined to unravel the mystery of the little girl in red and her terrifying legacy. Armed with nothing but his wits and a sense of determination, Liang set out to investigate the origins of the legend. He combed through old newspaper articles and interviewed eyewitnesses, piecing together the puzzle of the girl in red's haunting presence. But the more he delved into the mystery, the more elusive the truth became. Every lead he pursued seemed to vanish into thin air, leaving him no closer to uncovering the truth behind the legend. Liang, delved deeper into the mystery, the truth seemed to slip further away, leaving him frustrated and desperate for answers. Each lead he followed ended in dead ends, leaving him more puzzled than before. Then, one foggy evening, he stumbled upon a video on YouTube that would change everything. The video, titled, Taichung De Keng Little Girl in Red Video, caught Liang's attention. With trembling hands, he clicked on the link, his curiosity peaked. As the footage played, Liang leaned in closer, his eyes widening in disbelief. There, on the screen, was the little girl in red, moving with an otherworldly grace that sent shivers down Liang's spine. Her eyes, dark and hollow, seemed to stare directly into his soul, and a sense of unease settled over him. But what truly chilled Liang to the bone was the little girl lurking in the shadows, a little girl in red, barely visible against the dense foliage. It was May, her presence unmistakable even in the grainy footage. As Liang watched, May's eyes seemed to follow him, her gaze filled with a dark intensity that sent a shiver down his spine. It was as if she knew he was watching, as if she was daring him to uncover the truth behind her chilling legend. Determined to unravel the mystery, Liang continued his investigation, reaching out to witnesses and scouring the internet for any information he could find. But with each passing day, May's presence loomed larger in his mind, her image haunting his every thought. Liang sat outside his rented small cabin, enjoying a quiet moment as he smoked a cigarette while taking a break. The air was crisp and cool, the sounds of the forest surrounding him like a comforting embrace. He had been exploring the woods for days, searching for any sign of the little girl in red, but so far, his efforts had been in vain. As he took a drag from his cigarette, he heard a rustling in the undergrowth nearby. He glanced up, expecting to see a small animal darting through the bushes, but instead, he saw her, May, the little girl in red, standing before him as if she had materialized out of thin air. Leong's heart skipped a beat as he stared at May, his mind struggling to comprehend what he was seeing. She was just as he had imagined her, small and delicate, with bright eyes and a mischievous smile. He felt a surge of excitement wash over him, his curiosity piqued by her sudden appearance. Little girl, he called out, jumping to his feet and taking a step toward her. Wait. 
but May only laughed, a tinkling sound that echoed through the forest. She turned and dashed into the underbrush, disappearing from sight before Liang could even blink. Driven by a sudden surge of adrenaline, Liang took off after her, his heart pounding in his chest. He crashed through the undergrowth, his senses on high alert as he followed Mei deeper into the forest. He didn't know why she had appeared to him or where she was leading him, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was on the brink of a great discovery. As he ran, the forest seemed to come alive around him, the trees whispering secrets and the shadows dancing at the edges of his vision. He felt as if he were being pulled towards something, drawn inexorably forward by forces he couldn't begin to understand. Suddenly, he burst into a small clearing, the air heavy with the scent of pine and earth. And there, standing at the center of the clearing, was May the little girl in red. She smiled at him, her eyes sparkling with mischief. You found me, she said, her voice like the wind through the trees. Liang grinned, his heart racing with excitement. I did, he said, but why did you run away? I want to talk to you. May's smile widened, and she beckoned him closer. Come, she said, there's something I want to show you. Liang felt a strange sensation wash over him, a tingling at the back of his mind that he couldn't quite shake. He took a step forward, his eyes fixed on May's, feeling as if he were being drawn toward her by an invisible force. As he approached, May reached out a small hand and placed it on his arm. Her touch was soft and warm, sending a shiver down Liang's spine. He felt a sudden sense of calm wash over him, his mind growing hazy and distant as if enveloped in a fog. Follow me, May whispered, her voice like a gentle breeze in the stillness of the forest. Liang nodded, his movements slow and deliberate as he followed May deeper into the jungle. He felt as if he were in a dream, his senses dulled and his thoughts drifting in and out of focus. The trees closed in around them, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers in the dim light. Liang stumbled over roots and rocks, his gaze fixed on Mei's small form ahead of him. With each step, the world around him seemed to blur and fade, until all that existed was Mei and the sound of her voice echoing in his ears. Keep going, she whispered, her words a soothing melody that wrapped around him like a cocoon. Trust me. And Liang did trust her, with a blind faith that he couldn't explain. He followed Mei deeper into the jungle, his mind empty of all thought except for the desire to stay by her side. Hours passed, and still, they pressed on, deeper and deeper into the heart of the forest. Liang didn't know how long they had been walking or where they were going, but he didn't care. All that mattered was Mei and the strange connection he felt to her. Finally, they emerged into a small clearing, the air heavy with the scent of damp earth and vegetation. Mei stopped and turned to face Liang, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. We're here, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Liang looked around, his mind slowly starting to clear. He realized with a start that he had been hypnotized, lured into the depths of the jungle by Mei's mysterious power. But before he could react, Mei stepped forward and placed a finger to his lips, silencing him. Close your eyes, she whispered, and open your mind. And as Liang closed his eyes, he felt a surge of energy wash over him, filling him with a sense of wonder and awe. He knew that he was on the brink of a great discovery, that the secrets of the little girl in red lay just beyond his reach, and with the little girl in red by his side, he was ready to unlock them, whatever the cost. Liang's eyes fluttered open as he felt a strong hand shaking his shoulder, blinking in the harsh light of day, he saw a team of rescuers standing over him, their faces etched with concern. Are you all right? One of them asked, their voice cutting through the fog in Liang's mind. Liang shook his head, trying to clear the cobwebs. Where? Where is she? He mumbled, his voice barely above a whisper. Where is who? The rescuer asked, exchanging a puzzled glance with their colleagues. The little girl in red, Liang replied, his heart pounding in his chest. The rescuers exchanged another glance, their expressions turning grave. We didn't see anyone else out here, the head of the team said. Just you. Liang felt a chill run down his spine at the mention of the little girl in red. He had been so sure she was real, so certain that she had led him into the depths of the jungle. But now, faced with the reality of the situation, he couldn't help but doubt himself. What happened? He asked, his voice trembling. The head of the rescue team sighed and crouched down beside Liang. You've been missing for nearly a week, he said gently, 
We found you wandering in the forest, disoriented and dehydrated. We've been searching for you ever since. Leong's head spun at the news. A week. He couldn't remember anything that had happened during that time. It was as if the days had been erased from his memory, leaving nothing but a void in their wake. But. The little girl in red, Liang stammered, his mind reeling with confusion. The rescuer's expression softened. I'm sorry, but I think you must have been hallucinating, he said. There's no sign of anyone else out here. What happened to me? Liang asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Liang's mind raced as he tried to make sense of what he was hearing. He couldn't remember anything that had happened during the past week, couldn't recall what had happened after the little girl in red had asked him to close his eye and open his mind. It was as if his memory had been wiped clean, leaving him with nothing but questions and confusion. But then, one of the rescuers spoke up, their voice filled with curiosity. What did you eat during all these days? They asked. Leong's brow furrowed in confusion, but before he could respond, he felt a sudden wave of nausea wash over him. He doubled over, clutching his stomach as a violent retching sensation overtook him. To his horror, Liang began to vomit, the contents of his stomach spewing out onto the forest floor. But it wasn't food that came up, it was dirt, soil, worms, and other unimaginable substances that should never have been inside a human body. The rescuers recoiled in shock, their faces pale with horror as they watched Liang empty his stomach onto the ground. They had never seen anything like it, and the sight left them speechless and terrified, their minds struggling to comprehend what they were witnessing. When Liang finally stopped retching, he collapsed onto the forest floor, his body racked with exhaustion. He felt weak and dizzy, his mind reeling from the shock of what had just happened. The head of the rescue team knelt beside him, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder, we need to get you to a hospital, he said urgently. There's something seriously wrong here. As the rescuers helped Liang to his feet and led him away from the forest, he couldn't shake the feeling that he had been touched by something dark and sinister. The memory of the little girl in red haunted him, her presence a specter in his mind that refused to be ignored. But as he stumbled out of the forest and into the waiting ambulance, he knew that he was leaving something behind, a mystery that would remain unsolved a truth that would forever elude him. And as the ambulance pulled away, disappearing into the distance, Liang couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the depths of the jungle, waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to seek them out. The End Thank you for joining this chilling journey. If you enjoyed exploring ghosts, mythical creatures, urban legends and much more, Please share and like this video. Subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications bell for more. See you soon, my brave explorers.